All right, thanks, Marla. Um, yeah, like Marla said, uh, those uh, RCTP uh, application materials uh, were sent out uh, through email um, for, uh, by Sarah Burning from our office uh, last week. Uh, so you should have gotten uh, all that information. Um, and so all the information that I'm gonna present here today in this training presentation uh, all comes directly from the program guidelines uh, that were sent out with that. Um, so you should have got that and you should get a couple of the forms uh, for sample resolutions, uh, questionnaire form um, and, and all that stuff. So if anybody did not get that information, um, you can just uh, go ahead and email me or Marla and uh, we'll make sure that you get uh, everything. you need. So uh, for our training here today, um, we have three goals. Uh, so we wanna provide an overview of the RCTP program. And we also wanna go over um, change, some, some changes that were made to the project evaluation criteria, criteria for this FY22 round of RCTP applications. And then at the end, we will have some time for questions. And so I believe the plan is, is that during the presentation, if you think of a question, you can type it into the chat box. And we'll, once we get to the end, we'll kind of read through the questions and uh, come up with answers that way. Uh, and then I think at some point, we'll just kind of open it up for any other questions that anybody has um, as we get to the end. So first, uh, the description of the RCTP program. So the program provides funding to small cities to help implement non-federal aid transportation projects. Delaware, Dubuque, Jackson, and Clinton counties have all created RCTP programs. So each of those programs is actually a program that's run by, the, by each county. So each county has approved $70,000 for its FY22, 2022 RCTP program. And the, uh, the counties distribute RCTP funds to cities through a competitive application process. So the counties have our agreements with the uh, RPA8 staff to administer the program and to help cities with writing the applications. A little, little bit more description, uh, the maximum annual RCTP award to a city is $25,000. And RCTP will fund a maximum of 80% of the total project costs and the city must secure a minimum of 20% of the total project costs. So eligible projects. So um, this is the list from the project guidelines of projects that are eligible for RTP fund RCTP funding. So that includes uh, flashing warning lights, signals, street lights, reconstruction of road, resurfacing of a road, crack filling, uh, safety improvements, including intersection improvements, uh, existing sidewalks, ADA ramps, and crosswalks. So there is a line item there for other types of projects. So uh, applicants with, without a project that's specifically listed there um, should contact their county engineer uh, before they submit the application um, to make sure that it's eligible. eligible. And, and that can differ from county to county. It's kind of up to what each county engineer and what each board of supervisors wants to see uh, within that county. So to apply for an RCTP grant, um, you need to submit the following items. The questionnaire, uh, an authorization to apply a resolution that's approved by the city council, the priority project resolution. So this is kind of your planning resolution um, with the list of three projects that the city uh, would like to see implemented uh, in the future and the supporting materials. So this would include your cost estimates, photos and letters of support. So all that information, uh, the deadline to submit that all is 5 p.m. on March 18th, 2021. So, um, one, one thing uh, with the supporting materials, uh, the, the photos uh, of the project, uh, in the past uh, when we've had a, a bad weather year, a winter with a lot of snow, uh, some cities have, have uh, re requested an extension to the photograph portion of that um, and, and we have granted that in the past. Um, so, you know, as we get closer to that March 18th deadline, if, there's, if the ground and streets are still covered with quite a bit of snow, uh, we may allow some extra time to submit photos just so we're not getting pictures of snow covered roadways that we can't see the road surface anyway. Um, so those, um, those applications, uh, application materials would be emailed to me and to Chandra 
Um, typically, uh, what we usually do is uh, Chandra takes two counties and I take the others. So I think in the past, and I think we're going to do the same thing this time, but we just ask you to submit just email uh, to both of us. Um, so we'll both have the information. Uh, so the timeline for the application process and approval. Uh, so here we are in starting out in February. Um, so we're conducting the city clerk workshop. Uh, then between February and March, cities at any time before that March 18th deadline can submit their questionnaire priority project list resolution, supporting information and authorization to apply resolution. Then as soon as that information gets started, we can start working on the application. So between February and April, we'll be working on putting those applications together, um, doing the analysis and things like that. Then in April or May, uh, the RPA board will form the ranking committee and uh, we will assist that committee with ranking the application. So typically what we do is we send that information out to the committee members uh, beforehand. And then we set up a meeting where we can I'll sit down and go through the applications and the committee will assign the scores to those applications. So then in June, uh, the committee scores are sent over to each county board of supervisors who have the final approval authority and they, they approve the final projects. And then in June, we start working on drafting up the 2080 agreements between the county and the cities receiving funding. And then, yeah, and then, so by, by August, July or August, the city should be able to uh, start work on those projects. So as I mentioned earlier, we have made some updates to the project evaluation criteria. So uh, in the past, uh, there were, uh, the criteria was split into uh, four different sections, each worth 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. So we had traffic safety, local match and condition of the existing project. So for the new criteria, it's still a total possible score of 100. Um, traffic, Safety and local match are essentially the same, but they're all worth 20 points now. We added a new category called community support and then existing conditions, that's it's essentially the same as the, but tweaked a little bit. So we'll go through all of these and how they've changed. But again, it's it's pretty much the same. It's just a, a, a little bit different. And the, the main reason why we made some of these updates is we just wanted to try to make it um, after, we'd, after we had gone through this process a few times, we wanted to, just adjust it a little bit to make it fit with um, the information that cities that have been providing in their applications and what the counties want to see uh, when they're ranking. So the traffic, traffic criteria is worth 20 points. And so um, the ECIA staff will assign a score to each application based on traffic, a traffic count to city population ratio. So um, basically we take the traffic count and divided by the population of the city. So for that calculation, uh, the staff use uh, IOD tra DOT traffic counts or estimates or traffic counts produced by a third party using the standard uh, approved traffic count procedures. Um, for the population, we use the total city population from the most recent decennial census. So at this point, the most recent census is still uh, 2010. Uh, so those are the numbers we were, would be. Uh, so then based on those ratios, uh, we uh, award points uh, based on the scores. So um, you can see the scores there in the table and they are also included in the guidelines document. So for safety, um, the NECAA staff assign a score uh, to each application based on the safety benefit cost ratio. And so to calculate this ratio, we use the standard Iowa DOT benefit cost safety analysis worksheet, which is the same worksheet that the Iowa DOT uses for their traffic safety improvement program uh, grant applications. Uh, but basically what it does is you put in the Iowa DOT, input Iowa DOT crash data, uh, and then a crash reduction factor uh, from a website called the Crash Modification Factors Clearinghouse, which is a website that uh, contains a bunch of research uh, for how much specific types of projects uh, would reduce specific types of vehicle crashes. So the, the committee will also give a special safety consideration uh, to projects that provide safe routes to school uh, or and improve safety for children. So 
in the table there, you can see that based on the score, the benefit cost ratio, you can get a total, uh, get up to 15 points. So between five and 15 points there. Uh, the, la the remaining five points out of 20 uh, comes from that safe route to school uh, consideration. So that, uh, that safe route to school is determined by the committee. Uh, so they'll look at the information provided and determine if it's a safe route to school project or not. And, and usually uh, the way that the city would uh, make the case for a safe route to school project is they would have the school district uh, provide a letter um, and, and say that this, is, this project would improve safety for, for children uh, within a district or, or from a specific school principal or something like that. So in the local match category, uh, this score is assigned just based on the percentage of local funding uh, for the project. So to calculate the percentage, the staff divide the total, total funding provided in the project budget uh, or the total local funding provided in the budget by the total project budget. So, you know, for 20 to 25% is worth five points, uh, 25 to 35 is 10, uh, greater than, Greater, greater than or equal to 35%, less than 45% is 15, and then greater than or equal, greater than or equal to 45% is worth 20 points. So uh, the new category that was added was this community support category. So this was worth 20 points. And in this case, in the previous three categories, uh, those were essentially points awarded based on numbers. And, analysis. So safety analysis, uh, traffic analysis, and then just the numbers of the, the local match. So those just points were awarded just based on those numbers. Um, the last two categories are more subject, sub, subjective, and they are points that are awarded by, by the committee. So the committee will review the information in the application, and award a score, award the appropriate, or whatever score that they feel appropriate in those categories. So uh, the project ranking subcommittee awards between zero to 20 points in the community support category uh, based on the level of community support de demonstrated in the application. So applications can demonstrate community support by submitting letters of support from citizens, businesses, schools, churches, or other organizations. I can also submit a signed petition of citizens, uh, meeting minutes, uh, newspaper articles, or relevant document, other re relevant documentation. So um, typically uh, this is where letters of support and peti petitions would be uh, evaluated, but you know, if there is some other documentation that you wanna submit, um, it would be considered under this uh, criteria. So, you know, maybe if the, if there's a, a project and there was a, a city council meeting and there was a lot of people that came and spoke in favor of the project uh, at the meeting. They, uh, you know, and it was documented in the minutes or it was written up in a newspaper article, you could submit that here. Um, so really anything that could demonstrate that level of support uh, could be considered here. So the last category is the existing conditions category. Um, so again, this is a, more of a subjective category where the committee can award between zero and 20 points uh, based on the conditions of the infrastructure, existing infrastructure and the project area. Uh, so the committee can also consider under this one, how effective the proposed project will be in, in addressing the deficiencies in the existing infrastructure. Um, and so we, we added that description, that second piece, um, because in the past we've had a few projects where the committee kind of questioned whether or not the project that was being proposed would be a, a good long-term fix uh, for the for the issues that that we were seeing. So, um, so I think an, an example of that would be if there's a roadway would, that's you know completely deteriorated and you know the, it needs to be completely reconstructed. But maybe the proposed project is to just do some uh, patching or seal coating or something like that that may may put a bandaid on it, maybe kind of a temporary fix. So uh, the committee. Uh, can consider that as well uh, when they are awarding points in this uh, in this area, and so uh, applicate applicants can demonstrate existing conditions through through photographs is the primary way. But also, if you have you know an engineer's evaluation 
or some other relevant documentation. So, you know, not not all uh, not all applicants are going to have uh, an evaluation from an engineer. Um, in some cases, they do. So that could be submitted and considered here. Uh, but for the most part, this is going to be uh, through photographs um, showing the existing conditions uh, of the uh, proposed project here. So that is uh, is the presentation. Um, so if you need more information, you can either contact Chandra or, or myself. Uh, there's our emails and phone numbers are there. Um, and so yeah, I, I think that's that's what I have. And I guess we can uh, uh, open it up for questions. Well, it looks like we just have one question. It may have been answered already, but can you please repeat what you said about photos? Uh, yeah, so, you know, just because of the winter has been the way it has been with lots of snow and there's still a lot of snow on the ground now, um, we we may extend that deadline for submitting photos uh, a little bit longer, depending on how much snow is still on the ground at the time uh, around around the 18th when the, when the application materials would be submitted. There aren't more questions. Well, you know how to get a hold of us if you guys think of something later. Um, this is like the easiest grant that I've ever stumbled upon. <laughs> so. Okay. Oh, we have another question. See that, Dan? Yep. Uh, so it says we have not received any funds in the last two years and still have the same project. Can we submit again? Uh, yes, you can uh, submit it again. Um, and I did not highlight this in the presentation, but it is in the guideline that uh, there is uh, the uh, or, um, applicants that have received funding uh, in recent years would will have points uh, deducted from their total score. Um, so the idea is that we prevent, uh, you know, cities from getting funding every year. Um, so, yeah, so it's based, so for each year, up to five years after you receive funding, you will get a point deduction, but that number of points taken off goes down uh, each year. Uh, so the farther away you get from receiving funding, the better chance of, the, be the, the better chance you will have of getting it uh, in the future. But that that should not deter people from applying, right? I mean, I, I just got a call from another community. I thought they were calling because they couldn't get on the meeting for some reason, but it was about something else. And I said, oh, can, can you just email me or can I call you back? The RCTP meeting is right now. And she said, oh, yeah, we got an award last year, so we're not applying this year. So, I mean, yes. That um, so, you know, even if you receive um, funding in the last year or two, you can still apply. Uh, we have had situations in the past where uh, maybe somebody that's ranked higher needs to pull out their application uh, for for some for some reason, um, or maybe you know the total amount of funding that's available is you know doesn't all get spent. Maybe don't get enough applications. Um, so there is still a chance um, that you could receive funding, uh, even even with those point deductions. All right. Any any other any other questions out there? Oh, before we close, uh, just one quick question to all the members. Do you think this program is going like how it is designed or do you think like saying it's not meeting what it's been designed for? What do you guys think? Whoever speaks will get money. How about that? Oh. <laughs> wow, Chandra. 
Well, hearing none, I think so we are doing good job then. Okay. Well, we're getting some comments if you look in the chat. Um, Carrie from Baldwin says she loves the program. Aaron oh, Learn. I can't see those. Oh, okay. I think it's great. Our community appreciates the opportunity. Okay. Another person said that Marla is awesome. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, th I think so. it's a typo. I see that, yeah. Do you see all the comments? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a typo about Marla. I know that for sure. <laughs> All positive. That's great. Let's let's just quit for the day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, one thing we got is uh, last time we have been asked by a couple of communities who got funding through different part from RPA for a project that is eligible for federal aid. So their question is, will that impact their funding, their ap application this round? These are two different rounds, uh, two different funding sources. So that has nothing to do with uh, each other. So those are two different parts. So you don't need to worry. If you got funding from another part last year, it won't have an impact this year. So. Chandra, there was a comment, um, a constructive one here. Okay. The only downfall is that um, she wishes they they knew in May before June, mm -hmm. as contractors like to know sooner if they can start the project this year. No, I agree. We, we will do our best to push things because as we are working with four counties and when we get uh, at least like eight applications from each county, uh, things pile up very fast, but we'll do our best to see if we can wrap it up by end of May for sure, if not into June. Right now, the schedule says by first week of June, we'll get it to the supervisors. We'll try our best to move it to May, so. Okay. 